coming to that realization and knowing at the end of the day, absolutely nothing will actually satisfy us the way God will. Nothing. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melly and I make faith-based content here on YouTube. I post new videos every single Tuesday. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely be sure to subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. And if you are a returning subscriber, hey guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and hop into today's video. So today we are going to be talking about five things that can hinder your relationship with God. So these five things are things that either I have walked through, so I personally have experienced this, or things that I'm currently walking through, like I am going through this right now. And God really placed this on my heart to share with you and really just be transparent and what a relationship with God looks like. There are definitely times where you feel like y'all are bestie boos, but there are times when you can feel distant. And I hope that this video can encourage you to maybe recognize something that is causing you to be distant in your relationship with God and to mitigate it, to kind of do something a little bit different to get back to the Father. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into number one. So number one on our list today is self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency will absolutely hinder your relationship with God because it confuses you into thinking that you can do things apart from Him. So in John 15, 5, I'm going to read the Bible verse. I got my iPad here. So if I'm looking down, that's what I am looking at. But in John 15, 5, it says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And I think this Bible verse really sums up self-sufficiently perfect because self-sufficiency is a lie. It comes in to tell you, hey, you can do this on your own. You don't need to consult God on this. Life is going great. You can just do whatever you want to do. Like you don't really need to incorporate him into your life. And I went through so many cycles of this thinking when I first started out in my relationship with God. And honestly, it pops back up here and there as well. So in the beginning of my relationship with God, I would go to him when something was bad. I would go to him when life felt tumultuous and like I didn't know what to do and I didn't feel peace. And then the peace of God after spending time with him would start to penetrate my heart and I would just feel so much better. And then when I felt better, I would be like, oh, I'm perfect, like I'm good now. I don't really need to spend time with him. And then something would pop up and I would then feel bad again or I wouldn't know what to do or I would feel sad. And who do I go to? I go to God. And so it was really just this cycle that I kept going on this, 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 um, I was gonna say treadmill, but it's not a treadmill, like this hamster wheel. There we go. It's just like this hamster wheel that I would continuously go on. Relationship with God is a relationship, the good and the bad, spending time with Him, the good and the bad, leaning on Him. So I just encourage you with that and knowing like this does pop up for myself sometimes. When things are going well, I am less inclined to prioritize spending time with him and I have to recognize it and really just like nip it in the bud and do differently and just tell myself like, yeah, you might think that, but no Mel, that is not the case. Girl, you need him. Make sure you're spending time with him. So that is number one. So number two on our list today, the second thing that will hinder your relationship with God is being in the wrong relationships. And I mean relationships romantically or friendships. I have personally experienced the backsliding effect that can happen when you are linking yourself romantically to the wrong person. I started to compromise in my relationship with God. I started to compromise with the things I knew I was called to do. Um, all because I wanted a relationship to work and being around someone, you naturally start to rub off on each other. So while you may be a good influencing factor on them, let's say, they also, whether you know it or not, are rubbing off on you. You are picking up some of the things and if they are not just on that same path as you, if they don't have the same goals spiritually as you, that will start to show up in your life. Yes, being in the wrong relationship and just surrounding yourself with people that aren't really on that same path as you, or even people that aren't desiring to be on that same path as you spiritually, that can hinder you. That can make you be more complacent to not really pursue God with all of your heart. 
And this goes not just again for romantic relationships, but for friendships as well. And while I'm not saying that we need to cut everyone off who is a, not a Christian, by no means am I saying that, I think it is important to have an inner circle of people that you can lean on, rely on, do life with, that do have that same spiritual foundation as you. So you're able to really lean on one another. It says in the Bible, Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. You need those people in your life that you're able to lean on. They can, you know, help you on your walk. You're able to help them on their walk, sharpening each other and really just having that understanding of what you're trying to achieve here on earth like spiritually that is so powerful um and i know it can be hard to find that community i i really do um so that's why i actually created the for his glory sisterhood facebook group so if you are finding yourself struggling with making those connections with like-minded women i highly suggest you check it out it is a wonderful community we have about three thousand people in there we do weekly bible studies not weekly i'm sorry monthly bible studies um but yeah, so I will have that linked below. So number three on the list, the third thing that can hinder your relationship with God is having the wrong view of him. A lot of times we can have experiences with our earthly parents, especially our earthly fathers, and that can impact how we view God the Father. We can think that if our earthly father was very strict, that God is very strict. Or if our earthly father was kind of in and out, not very consistent, that God is the same way. But that couldn't be further from the truth. And it's really our responsibility to get to know God for ourselves, to see his character for ourselves. And that will allow us to really see him for who he is. But until we have that realization and that connection with him, to see him more for who he is, to see his character for ourselves, having that distorted view of God because we're looking at him through the lens of our earthly parents, that can really cause us to, you know, be distant with him. If we think that God is super strict, then we're not going to want to go to him when we mess up. Or if we think that God's not always there for us and isn't very consistent, we're not going to know that we can go to him, that he is always there and always willing to embrace us. And it's just waiting for us to do that. So I think it's really important, one, to kind of um, analyze for yourself, ask God to reveal to you anywhere in his character that you're seeing him through the lens of your earthly parents or your earthly um, father specifically. And then beyond that, kind of getting that realization, it also is our responsibility to spend time with God to get to know him for who he is. So if you're able to just, you know, dive into the Bible, you will learn more about God's character. Dive into books that talk about who God is or even reading devotionals that other people are sharing about who God has been to them. You're able to see more accurately God's character. And you're also able to recognize again, some of the places where you're viewing God through the lens of your earthly parents and maybe some of the shortcomings that you experienced in your relationship with them so yeah this has been something that I've had to walk through myself something that uh, when I first was starting my relationship with God I was realizing I had kind of pushed myself away from him for so long because I viewed him inaccurately I didn't view him as the loving consistent always present cares about the little things father that he is um, and it's definitely been a journey for me to continue throughout my walk with him today to ensure that I'm understanding and seeing him for who he is, understanding his character. So number four in our list, the fourth thing that can hinder your relationship with God is unconfessed sin. I kind of mentioned this in a previous video, but when there is sin in your life, it can absolutely create distance between you and God. And oftentimes we can be blind to this sin. It can be so so normalized in our lives or in our culture or we can just not have that realization that the thing that we're experiencing the root cause of it is sin so this is something that I have been learning recently and it's because I've been reading a book called the power the purpose understanding the purpose and power of prayer there we go by dr. miles Monroe I actually mentioned it in the recent video I did about seven books that changed my life I will link above here I believe perhaps here. Anyways, it will be linked, but this book has absolutely been changing the way that I pray. And the book goes through a template of prayer and a portion of the template includes 
going to God and before you even, you know, bring your desires to him, asking him to search your heart, asking him to show you if there's any sin in your life that you need to repent of and turn towards him too. I think I said that a little bit wrong, but you guys get it. Is there anything that I need to turn away from and turn towards you? And I do this daily now. Before I go to God with any request and kind of <laughs> all the things I want him to do, I ask him to search my heart. So daily having that heart check, asking God to show you, is there anything in my life right now today that I need to repent of? Is there any sin in my heart right now that I need to repent of? It has been really eye-opening. I thought that repenting of your sins was something that you just do when you get saved. I didn't really understand that it needs to be something that you do more frequently. Sin can easily pop into your life, pop into your heart. And again, when it's there, it is creating that distance and can hinder you in your relationship with God. So for this point, I'm going to leave you with this Bible verse. It says in John 1, 9, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I think that the big revelation for me, at least here, is that this isn't a one-time confession of sin. This is a daily thing. And it's been really great. I've actually really enjoyed God searching my heart and showing me like, hey, there's some uh, jealousy here in your heart. How about you recognize it, repent of it, and turn towards me? And just getting that time daily to kind of be checked by the Lord, I think it's always gonna be a good thing. I've seen it be a good thing in my life. I'm more aware of what's going on in my heart, you know, having heart checks daily. All right, guys, we made it to the end of the list. Number five, the fifth thing that can hinder our relationship with God is distractions or idols. So John Piper has a devotional where he talks about the glory of God and he said it so perfectly. We humans so easily exchange the glory of God, which is where we can find ultimate and complete satisfaction for images of ourselves, images of social media, images of um, our relationships, our marriages, our children, our families, travel, literally anything that we put above God and think that we're going to find satisfaction in that thing instead of finding satisfaction in God has become an idol. It has become something that we've exchanged the glory of God for. In our culture right now, this is something that you can see so clearly and so plainly, and I think we've all experienced this. This has been something that I have been trying to break off in the name of Jesus in my life. So yeah, this is, this is another thing where we have to ask God to search our hearts, show us what is an idol, what is something that we're putting above him, what is something that we are operating and thinking that if we have this, we'll be more satisfied than if we have our relationship with God and coming to that realization and knowing at the end of the day, absolutely nothing will actually satisfy us the way God will, nothing. So yes, that is number five. All right, guys, so that is my list. These are the five things that will hinder your relationship with God. And now it is your turn. So in the comments below, I would love to know if you resonated with any of these five points or if you have any others. I think we can really help each other along on our walks by sharing some of the hindrances that we've experienced so we can be more aware of what to keep our eye out for or what to kind of be on the lookout for, aware of. When it pops up, we can mitigate it quicker than if we didn't know about it. So I look forward to reading through your responses and I encourage everyone to read through as well. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video next Tuesday. Peace.